Okay, in this video, we're gonna be doing number three from the 2024 AP pre-calc exam. Let's take a look at it. It's the uh, sinusoidal one or the trig one. Uh, tire of a car has a radius nine inches. Person rolls a tire uh, at a constant rate on level ground as shown in the figure. Uh, point W on the edge of the tire touches the ground at time T equals one half. Tire completes a full rotation. The next time it touches the ground is at T equals five halves. Uh, so we can use that to find the period of this thing. The maximum height is 18 inches above the ground as the tire rolls. W uh, above the ground periodically increases and decreases. Uh, the sinusoidal function AH models the height of point W above the ground in inches as a function of time in seconds. So many words. Uh, in part A, we want to, what are we doing? Five points F, G, J, K, and P are labeled. No scales indicated. No axes are presented. Determine possible coordinates for T, H of T for the five points F, G, J, K, and P. So first thing I'm going to say is they did not limit the time to be positive. And generally speaking in um, math, it you don't need positive time. It can just be time before you start measuring. So I'm not going to restrict myself to that. So keep that in mind. In future years, I would imagine they might restrict the time and then we'll deal with it. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is look at this. Radius is nine inches, um, which means this distance is nine. Um, what else do we know? So we're 18 inches above the ground. So I mean, starting at point J, like that lower horizontal line, the most you can go is 18. And from there, we actually know quite a bit. Uh, we know like the amplitude of this thing is nine. Um, we know that J is on the ground. So the Y coordinate or the H coordinate there, I guess is zero. Um, and then because you can go up 18, the H coordinate uh, at the top here would be 18. So we've got a bunch of things written down. Now we also know that at one half we're on the ground and then at um, five halves, you are also on the ground. What just happened there? Hold on. Nothing happened. Something happened? Oh, something did happen. So I labeled the point. Jeez, this is, I write them out ahead of time and then I talk through them. It's hard to remember everything on this one. Um, since we're on the ground at one half, I'm just labeling that point J as one half zero. Uh, I'm okay with it. I don't think it's a bad thing to do. Uh, so we're, we're starting with that. And then uh, at five halves, you're on the ground again, which means that uh, the total period is five halves minus one half, which is two. And if you go from minimum to minimum, it'll be two. But on the picture, they gave us maximum to maximum. So I'm just going to say this should be two units apart in time. So two seconds apart. Uh, additional information. So we can find the increment. The increment is one fourth of the period. So two divided by four is one half. And now we can just start counting things off, right? So this point right here, we would move over one half, you go up to nine. Then you're gonna move over one half again, which takes you to three halves, and you go up another nine to get to 18. We can also go backwards. So this, if you go backwards one half, you end up at zero, you're back at nine, and then go back again. This is the one that's a little dicey. I'm going negative one half 18. It's a legitimate point. It just means you'd have to like rewind the tape to see where they were at that point. Um, but I think that's okay. I don't know, maybe the official scoring won't count it, I think it definitely should. Um, so I think we labeled of our points. They're here. There you go. Let's look at the next part. Um, the function H can be written as H of T is A sine B of quantity T plus C and then plus D. Find the values of A, B, C, and D. Uh, so this is what we, we kind of had. We know these things. We had this point was zero nine. Uh, we had all that. Okay, so uh, first thing, is I would say that we can we know the period is two, and we know that two pi over b is equal to the period. So I'm gonna say that b is equal to pi. So I think we're supposed to literally find them. I mean, at the end I also wrote it, um, but I think just like listing them. So b is pi. Uh, we also know that the midline is definitely at nine, right? Because we started zero, went up to nine, then up to eighteen, then back to nine. Nine is in the middle. Uh, I call the midline the sinusoidal axis. I believe that's actually the original correct term, but we've uh, gone with midline, it turns out, these days. So we have D is equal to 9. Um, we also, we're going to start here at um, 0, 9, which means uh, I'm just going to say that my start, which is the C value, is equal to 0. And then uh, we also need the amplitude. So since we're starting at an intercept and going down to a minimum, we're using a negative sine graph, so A is going to be negative 9, right? You have to choose positive 9 or negative 9. If you're starting in the middle and going to a minimum, negative 9 is the way to go. So we've listed A, B, C, and D. I'm also going to write H of T, but I don't actually think it was required in this case. 
Um, there you go. There's an infinite number of equivalent answers to this. So uh, it should be really fun uh, to score all of these. Um, but that's our answer for B. Let's take a look at C and D. So refer to the graph of H in part A. Uh, the T coordinate of K is T1 and the T coordinate of P is T2. On the interval T1 to T2, which of the following is true about H? So this is actually, I think, a multiple choice question. I'm just going to circle one. So we're going from K to P. And on that interval, uh, you can see that the function is increasing. And we know the Y values actually are always positive for this function. So I'm going to say that H is positive and increasing. And that's literally the entire question. Um, for part two, it says describe how the rate of change of H is changing, how the rate of change of H, so the slope of H, how is the slope of H changing on the interval from T1 to T2? So on T1 to T2, that part that we've highlighted, the graph is concave down. So one of the things you want to definitely know going into this thing is concave up, concave down, what that means for the rate of change. So on the interval T1 to T2, H of T is concave down. When a curve is concave down, its rate of change is going to be decreasing. So we're just going to say, therefore, the rate of change of H is decreasing on T1 to T2. You walk in knowing that fact and you walk out with those points. Um, that's the entire question. I hope this was helpful and good luck.